How's it going, everyone? Welcome to I Can Alter X That with coaches Alex and John. My name's Alex Christensen. Today, we're going to learn how to join on a range in Alteryx. We'll be using Alteryx Weekly Challenge number one as an example. Let's get started. So let's take a look at our input and our output data here to see what we're working with. By the inputs, I'm going to add a browse. And I'm going to run my workflow. So let's take a look at our output data first. And I'm going to open this in a new window. And here we can see we have four columns. We have region, we have sales rep, we have responder, and we have count. Just from the description of reading this, I know that this is the number of customers. So it looks like by each region sales rep and whether they were a responder, we need to figure out how many customers each sales rep has. So let's take a look at the data we're starting with though. So here, I have individual customers, store number, which I don't need, customer segment, which I don't need, and then responder, which I do need, and then postal area. Down here, what I have is a range of postal codes, a region, a sales rep, and then the expected revenue, which I don't need for the final results. So here really lies the problem with this exercise is in the customer data set, we have individual postal codes, therefore, because this is in Australia, but here with the sales reps, we have a range. So how do we address this before we join the data together? Well, the first thing I'm going to do with the range data is I'm going to split up the fields. So I'm gonna to go to the parse table and I'm gonna to go to text to columns and I'm going to split the range field based off of the hyphen into two different fields. If you're following along, I'll give you a second to look at this. Range, delimiter of a hyphen, and number of columns is two. So once I do this and add another browse afterwards, I'm going to open this in a new window again. What I see is the number one column is the beginning of the range, and then the number two column is the end of the range. I'm going to rename these fields using a select tool, and I'm going to rename one top postal code. Actually, you should probably call that bottom postal code. Bottom postal code. And then two, I'm going to name top postal code. All right, so now I have that done. What to do next? Well, with this data, I'll run it again with the new columns. I think I want to generate rows where I have one row for each of the numbers between this range. So using this first line as an example, I want one record for every number between 2000 and 2019. So Alteryx makes it really easy to generate some rows. So I'm going to bring out the Generate Rows tool from the Preparation menu, and then I'm going to do a couple things. So I'm going to update an existing field. I'm going to change the bottom postal code to be the updated field. I need to have an initializing expression. So this is what I start with per row. And I want to start with the bottom postal code per row. Get rid of that number one there. That was the placeholder. And then we have the condition expression. So this is, while this condition is met, we need to keep on generating rows. So what we want here is the bottom postal code is less than or equal to the top postal code. And then finally, what do we do with every loop expression? Well, this is a range. So what we would do is we would take the bottom postal code and we would add the number one to it. But we have an error here that says type mismatch in operator. This is usually a data type error. So I can go back to my select tool. I can see that my generate rows is erroring out and it's because these are strings. These should actually be integers. So I'm gonna change these both to int 16. Now the error on the generate rows has gone away. I can run my workflow. And 
And now I can see that I have, within the bottom postal code field, I have all of the postal codes within the given ranges. I no longer need this top postal code field. We really only needed that for the generate rows loop. So I'm gonna clean some stuff up. I'm gonna use a select tool here. I am just gonna call bottom postal code. I'm just gonna call this postal code now. Get rid of top. And then now what we can do is we can join in our other data. So I'm gonna bring in the customer information from before. Put that down here at the bottom. Scroll down a little bit. And what I'm going to do is join these data sets together. So I have to say, what am I joining on? Well, I'm joining from the left table, postal code field that I created with the postal area field from the data set. So now I can run my workflow. And I can see that I have all of the fields plus some more that I need. The final thing I need to do is I needed to create that count that we saw in the output at the beginning, which is just counting the number of customers. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is from the transform menu, I'm gonna bring out a summarize tool. And what I need is region, sales rep, and responder, so I'm control clicking, and I'm gonna group by these fields. And then I have one record per customer, so I can actually count any of these fields. But for simplicity's sake, and just kind of for some impromptu documentation, I'm gonna select customer ID and say, we are counting this field. Now, I'm also going to rename these fields in the output field name, because I don't want that group by. So I'm just gonna say region, sales rep, and finally, responder. And we're gonna run our workflow and confirm our results. So here on the workflow I made, I have one record per region, sales rep, and responder. And at the top, I have the count of 476. And at the bottom, I have 93 and 10 records. Just to confirm, on my output here, I have the same 10 records, region, sales rep, responder, 476, and 93 at the bottom. As always, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the Data Coach channel for more awesome lessons on Alteryx and all things data, analytics, and visualizations. Follow Data Coach on Twitter at AskTessellation and follow me personally on Twitter at Abracadata89. Thanks again.